I want to share with you a few things I've been learning about folk music tradition and why it's gotten me excited about writing new music these days. This is a piece called Reeling by Julia Wolfe, and I've been absolutely obsessed with it. It's immediately accessible, has a strong groove to it, and has this crazy fun energy that combines French-Canadian folk singing with contemporary music. Later on, I'm going to share with you an original piece that I wrote inspired by this that draws from folk music from my own heritage. But first, let's talk about how cool and quirky the rhythm of reeling is. The beat is straightforward at first, and as you hear, there are four beats to a measure. But then we have moments like this, where we have these rhythmic hiccups and offbeats that kind of throw you off. You have to like jump in and you jump out and it is this like fixed tempo and everyone is just like chick -chick 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 So when I first heard this piece, I always thought the rhythm sounded so hip because it was off just enough to make you feel like you've lost the beat but you're still grooving and I couldn't figure it out until I looked at the score. What's happening is that every once in a while there's either one or three eighth notes that are added in between the phrases. <laughs> Now listen to when the kick drum is added. Together with the rhythmic hiccups, it's really hard to get a sense of the downbeat. And this is a really cool effect that's created with only a few slight changes that disrupt the rhythm. So I learned this piece for a concert in Toronto, Canada, and these moments were certainly the trickiest parts to master during rehearsals. It's also why this piece is performed with a click. The singing you hear in the piece is what you call mouth music. So there's no text being sung, and the voice is imitating melodic instruments. Traditionally, singers sing unaccompanied and had a certain freedom in stretching the phrases to accommodate dramatic events, or extra metrical feet in the lyrics. In Newfoundland, like when you play, like let's say you play like a reel that's three bars of three, four, and then one bars of five, one bar of five, eight, or something like that, they call that a crooked reel because there's like a, a beat missing or there's like a hic there's a hiccup. There's so for example, a word like O oh is added to the beginning of a phrase. O oh, to market to market to buy a fat pig. O oh, to market to market to buy a fat pig. Or a word like jog can be added to the end of a phrase. Home again, home again, jiggity jig jog. Home again, home again, jiggity jig jog. Movement and dance are also a big part of the picture. According to Evelyn Osborne, although one can see that the music and the steps do fall together, dancing in a small space with other people moving around, interrupting to say hello, someone getting confused and joining back in, a perfect 8 or 16 measure movement may go askew. By the mid-1900s, many French-Canadian tunes became more separated from dance, but feet percussion maintained a crucial part of music making. In the sampled clip, you can hear foot stomping called podorythmy. This is why heel taps are written in for the musicians in reeling. I want to take a moment to thank the sponsors of today's video, Donor. So Donor makes budget-friendly keyboards and various musical accessories. They sent me this DEP20 keyboard that I'm using throughout the video. It's been helping me a ton because I've been on the road and I just need a keyboard to get work done and practice for upcoming concerts. So it's fully weighted and has 88 keys and while it doesn't have the sturdiest build, while traveling, it is nice that the whole keyboard weighs less than 25 pounds. I use it the most while connecting it to my computer in order to use the virtual instruments I'm used to, but there are quite a number of cool built-in sounds, actually over 200 of them, and I find them to be quite impressive. Now let me introduce you to a piece I wrote called Chunyang that's inspired by reeling. So I modeled the instrumentation directly off of reeling. So that's piano, clarinet, cello, electric guitar, 
percussion, bass, and samples. Now, for the samples, I drew from Korean pansori. So I've been really interested in the different types of rhythms that I hear in traditional Korean music. There are so many different types. I just wanted to get some more general information. So I asked my friend John Lee, who's involved with playing, performing, and recording a variety of instruments and styles within the traditional Korean music bubble. Okay, there we go. So this is Changgu. Changgu. Traditionally, we count using the breath. In, literally, it, it, it's whole, right? So it's the breath. But it's kind of movement. So we move like one, two, three. Two, three, one, two, three. You have a sunset game. Yeah. Like the really old school ones, they'll play like a line and they'll be like, okay, you go. It's an oral tradition. Right. Show. Yeah, like. exactly. My conversation with John opened my mind up to more ways of overlapping folk music with modern music and made me think more about how many of these performance traditions are preserved orally. So the sample that I used is actually from a YouTube video that is a tutorial for pansori. I really love the playfulness and the force behind each phrase. It's almost like simultaneously being relaxed and then very jerky and very powerful. And I find that the sense of timing is so unique and certain points are accentuated with these hollering bits and also by the percussion. So I extracted bits of these to create short loops that would be incorporated into my piece. So just like with reeling, I wanted the musicians to play along with the samples. So I first had to find the pitches. Compositionally, this was really new and interesting for me because a lot of the melodic and harmonic ideas came directly from the sampled bits. Heresy. No, no, no. Feel free to criticize. That's, that's good. <laughs> People are doing this now. Do you know Changia? He also sampled Pansori like this. Oh, really? And then had Changia? Like, oh. I know how hard it is to put chords and like piano lines uh -huh. on top of things like this. So John was definitely right, a lot of times it was very tricky to develop this material and weave it in with the other instruments. A lot of times I just kept it looping and then I would change the bass line so that there's variety. And this is what my final piece more or less sounded like. Overall, I think the performances went great. If I were to do it again, I think I would be more careful about how the sounds are mixed and produce the backing track in a way that really keeps the acoustics of the hall in mind. Thank you to the Happenstancers for commissioning this piece. And thank you again to Donor for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching. And if you're interested in more music, topics, videos, all of this, 
do subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video.